For this video, we're going to see if we can parameterize our function representations of power series. So we've practiced a little bit of substituting into our basic formula to get a brand new power series. What we're going to try to do is instead of doing that one time, and every time I see a new problem, I'm going to try to figure out what the substitution is to see if I can parameterize the entire problem. So we're going to do a little bit of review until we can build a general case. And then using that general case, we're going to build a tool in GeoGebra to see if we can just answer all of our homework questions. That's the basic goal for today. So again, for review, we're going to start off with our basic geometric series. We know that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of r to the n minus 1 is going to equal 1 over 1 minus r. That's, of course, given that my radius, or my r value, sorry, is less than 1. Now, this choice of r is largely arbitrary. Um, we use r to mean the common, ratio, the common ratio, all right? But we want to do with functions. We're going to change that into an x. This isn't new. We've seen this before. So now this 1 over 1 minus x is going to be my new function, g of x. And g of x, I can represent with this power series as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. So now, let's see what we can do with this. Basic example, again, this is just like what we practiced already on Friday. Let's look now f of x equals x divided by 1 minus x. That's instead now, I can think of that instead as x times 1 over 1 minus x. How does that help? Well, that's x times g of x which means I have a power series representation. Now again, this x on the outside does not depend on n at all. Okay, So x is a, a number that's chosen sort of outside of the sum. right? It's not dependent on n, so I can bring it inside. And what that means is I now have a power series representation for f of x, which is n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n. So x divided by 1 minus x is the same thing as our original power series, except for multiplying every single term by x. And that's pretty much the secret, right? I have multiplied g of x by x, which multiplied every term by x. So for a general function now, what is that going to look like? Well, n to the x, n of x, excuse me, n of x divided by 1 minus x is going to equal just n of x times g of x. Here, n of x means numerator, which is my function, meaning the function in the numerator of the fraction. So that means I'm taking n of x times my power series representation for g, or I can just bring it inside. So n of x divided by 1 minus x is going to equal the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n of x times x to the n minus 1. And this works as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. Well, let's look what happens if I change what's happening in the denominator. So i of x is what I'm calling my inside function. And we'll see why I'm referring it to my inside function. Because as i of x, again, not new, we've seen this before on Friday, I'm just replacing x with i of x. So everywhere I see an x in the first line, I'll just replace it with i of x. Ah. So now my power series representation of this function is going to be g of i of x, which is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of i of x to the n minus 1, which means now my radius potentially is changed. So now I'm going to be careful. The other things that we did messing with the numerator didn't change my radius of convergence. But now my composition function certainly has changed it. So we're going to have to be careful. So now let's put it all together. So some generic function of n of x divided by 1 minus some function i of x. I now have a power series representation, which is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of function n of x times i of x all to the n minus 1. And we're almost done, except for this only works if my 
leading constant is 1, but what if it's just some generic constant? Well, let's do a little bit of algebra. This is 1 divided by c times 1 minus x over c, which is just 1 over c times g of x over c. And so now I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n minus 1 divided by c to the n. And this is going to converge as long as the absolute value of x is less than c. So this also changes, which makes sense because I have x divided by c inside my function g. The things inside g are going to impact the radius of convergence. And this c to the n, well, it's x to the n minus 1 divided by c to the n, because that extra c from the outside, I can just bring inside. And now we're able to bring it all together. So we're basically done here. So now I have some generic function, n to the x divided by c minus i to the x, i of x, sorry, equals n of x divided by c times g of i of x all divided by c. That's going to give me my power series representation, which is going to converge as long as my the absolute value of my interior function is less than c. That's great. That's quite a few functions that we can do. Now, what if it's of the form 1 divided by 1 minus x squared? I have no way of handling that. That's not quite true. I could actually do partial fraction decomposition. Um, and I could do partial fraction decomposition and go back to the original form that we have up above. That sounds terrible. Instead, let's recognize that 1 over 1 minus x squared is equal to the derivative of g. I can differentiate my power series term by term. So now I have this sum of n equals 1 to infinity of n times x to the n minus 1, which is going to converge when the absolute value of x is less than 1. Differentiating and integrating term by term do not change the radius of convergence. So just differentiating, I'm going to have the same radius of convergence in my original. So now that means we can have a fully parameterized function. So now I have n of x divided by the quantity c minus i of x all squared. With a little bit of algebra, I can see now that's n of x divided by c squared times g prime of i of x divided by c. Now be careful, I'm not using the chain rule. I've actually already divided g and then I'm plugging in i of x divided by c into that derivative. Okay, so this is not the chain rule. I'm not taking the derivative of the composition. I'm composing the derivative of g with some new functions. Let's be very careful there. Okay, I'm actually going to differentiate the original power series term by term and then compose inside that. So now I'm going to get a power series representation of n equals 1 to infinity of the function in the numerator times n times the inside function to the n minus 1 all divided by my new constant to the n plus 1. I'm bringing in that extra c squared from outside. And this is going to converge if whenever the absolute value of my inside function is less than c. So we fully parameterize this. Let's see this in action. Let's see how we did. So I've gone ahead and whipped up a little tool in GeoGebra. This tool will be made available to you of all the work that we did before um, with our scratch work, our hand work. Okay? So I have went ahead, uh, I have some value for c, which is going to control this constant in the denominator. I have some n of x, which is going to control the numerator, and some i of x, which is going to control the function um, that we subtract in the denominator. So my basic function is n of x divided by c minus i of x. I've set all the parameters to our basic situation, so you can kind of see how the tool works. Okay, so all the parameters are set to our normal geometric series, 1 divided by 1 minus x. Here I have a slider that's hooked up to the number of terms that we're approximating our power series. So we've dealt with power series up to infinity, but if I want to draw it, I have to actually pick a finite number. Um, so what I'm doing is a slider, I can increase the number of terms. Right? Um, the red line is my function, the blue line is my power series expansion. Okay, 
the green zone is where the power series converges for what values of x. So as you can see, as I get more and more terms, my blue line gets close to the red one inside the green zone only. Okay. How is that green zone determined? Well, it's i of x, the absolute value of i of x, less than c. That's how it's determined. Okay. This all comes from the ratio test originally, but we found it by actually by substituting into our original function of 1 divided by 1 minus x, because we're clever. Okay. So now let's see what happens. Um, let's set n of x equal to 4x and see what happens. So for 4x, a couple things I want to point out. All right, so we can see my original function now is 4 times x divided by 1 minus x. This 4 here did not impact my radius at all. The width of my green zone didn't change. Okay, Nothing changed about my radius of convergence. What's this 4 doing? This 4 is multiplied by every single term. Okay. So if we want to change our radius of convergence, well, that's equal to 2. So now I have 4x divided by 2 minus x, and we see my radius expanded. Okay. And my power series representation is getting pretty good in that zone. Okay. Alright, so c definitely impacts it. Well, now let's make this uh, instead x squared. So now I have 4x divided by 2 minus x squared. My radius contracted a little bit, but not all the way back to 1. Let's go ahead and zoom in for a second. Oh, it's right around 1.4. In fact, it's actually the square root of 2. Okay, so we have the square root of 2 is my radius. And if we come down here, that makes sense because this is going to converge when the absolute value of x squared is less than 2. That's the same thing as the absolute value of x is less than the square root of 2. So my i of x is going to impact my radius of convergence as well as the constant, okay? And then there's going to be an interplay between those two. Those are the two things. When I change n of x, I'm not going to impact my radius of convergence. And here we have it. So this tool is available to you. It's everything of the form n of x divided by c minus i of x. And we also did some work all right, at the very beginning of this video for functions of the form uh, 1 divided by the quantity 1 minus x all squared, so the derivative of this power series essentially. All right, see if you can try to, if you want, using GeoGebra, it's a completely free tool. Rig up your own little calculator to answer all your homework. And then in class, we'll also practice some other functions that we can recover like the natural log of 1 plus x or using arctan. So this exact method, we're going to develop quite a few series that we can do. Um, and if we think really about what we're doing, we don't have to make a new substitution every single time. Um, as you can see, once we break down our cases, we can pretty much answer everything at once. There's not a set of numbers that you can give me of this form that my calculator can't handle.